then after the birth phenomena uh, comes childhood itself. What has been your experience of affection? What has been your experience of trust? Then what has been your experience of siblings and rivalry? To be an only child is much different than being one of us, uh, two children, which is much different than being one of three, which is much different than being one of five. The next thing that sets our attitudes is the kind of discipline involved. Some people use positive discipline, other people use negative. Our sense of confidence arises out of our childhood. If you got strokes uh, for being uh, good and productive, or whether you were just ignored, so this whole idea of good versus bad, whether you're a good person, whether life is good, or you're a bad person, life is bad. Having bad circumstances at birth very often leads to the chronic criminals. Life has been bad from the very beginning, bad mothering, bad environment, bad companions, bad energy. The next thing that really influences us considerably is birth order. Were you the oldest of all, the youngest of all, the middle child? You know, they, they, traditionally certain <laughs> phenomena happen. If you're the oldest child or if the youngest one, uh, what the birth order is. The next thing that sets up our attitudes is our experiences, our experiences in schooling, our experiences in religion, our knowledge and awareness of having a soul. Uh, the capacity for reverence and for spirituality, the preoccupation with heaven or hell. Are you really uh, energized by the desire to move to heaven, or is it merely a fear of hell? So sin and guilt then bring up all uh, the whole fears of hell. Parenting skills then and bringing these things across to the child, and the physical health and heredity are profound factors in influencing our, our attitudes throughout all of life. So the reason we're looking at these things is because these are life attitudes. Everybody sitting out here in the audience right now has been profoundly interested by all these things in their life. And a self-aware person looks at all these various phenomena in their life and comes to a certain understanding about why they are the way they are. Does everybody here know why they are the way they are? <laughs> Anybody don't know why the way they are? You don't know why the way they are? Where'd you grow up? <laughs> well, you need a psychiatrist. <laughs> That's where the psychiatrist comes in, to help us to adjust to the phenomena that we don't seem to be able to just grasp in ordinary life. You know? So then we'll move on from childhood